you. Uh, Stanley Weintraub is a historian and award-winning author of more than 50 highly acclaimed books of history and biography, including Pearl Harbor Christmas, 11 Days in December, Disraeli and Final Victory, and I actually remember when I was a young undergraduate student reading a wonderful book that he wrote on young Queen Victoria. So he is a, a, a man of many talents. He is a National Book Award finalist. He's a former Guggenheim Fellow and a three-time recipient of the Distinguished Humanist Award from the Pennsylvania Humanities Council. He lives in Newark, Delaware with his um, wonderful wife, Rodell. And I am pleased uh, to welcome him to the stage so he can talk about his next book, Young Mr. Roosevelt. After his talk and after he takes your questions, he will be outside the New Deal gift store in the lobby here, where I'm sure he will be happy to sign all of the books that you're going to buy because you're inspired by his talk. So, ladies and gentlemen, Stanley Weintraub. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I've written about Franklin Roosevelt before, uh, and the last book I wrote about him was about the 1944 fourth term presidential campaign. Uh, when he ran for the fourth term, uh, we were near the end of World War II, uh, and many soldiers, in fact there were 11 million in uniform, uh, voted by absentee ballot. Uh, I wanted to find out how they voted and why they voted the way they did. And so I, uh, I had teams of people around the country and, I, and on my own. Uh, I also asked people uh, who lived through that period uh, how they voted. And quite a number of them, especially those who had been sailors, said, I voted for Roosevelt because he was a Navy man. Uh, that surprised me. Uh, I hadn't expected that. And I decided after that that I would go back and find out what kind of a Navy man he was. And so this book is the result. Uh, very often what happens is that the subject for a future book emanates from the previous book or the research for the previous book. And uh, no better example could be found, I guess, than uh, he was a Navy man, which uh, got me to young Mr. Roosevelt. I don't think he expected to be a Navy man at the start, uh, though he wanted to go to Annapolis. Uh, his uh, father wouldn't let him. Uh, his father, a rather elderly, middle-aged, um, wealthy uh, squire in this area, uh, didn't want uh, his only son by his second marriage. He had a son by a first marriage. He didn't want him to be away at sea during his declining years. And so he refused the idea uh, that Roosevelt should go to, young Roosevelt should go to Annapolis and become a Navy man. <laughs> uh, early on, uh, Roosevelt had no big ambitions uh, about becoming president or anything else of the sort. Uh, his father was one of the few Democratic Roosevelts. The Roosevelts were basically Teddy Roosevelt types and Republicans. His father, though, was a donor to the Democratic Party. Uh, and when young FDR was four or five years old, he was taken by his father to the White House uh, to meet Grover Cleveland, who, who was the first Democratic president uh, since before the Civil War. Uh, the previous Democratic president, not one that anybody could have been proud of, was James Buchanan. In any case, Grover Cleveland uh, greeted the young Franklin and said, I have one wish for you, little man, that you never become president of the United States. <laughs> he was beset by all kinds of uh, political troubles, and he th didn't think he could wish that on anybody. Well, Roosevelt had no ambitions to become president, uh, but suddenly his fifth cousin, uh, Theodore Roosevelt, became president. Uh, he was running for vice president. Uh, he, McKinley, the president, was shot in 1901, and uh, Theodore became president. Uh, the first entry into politics that young uh, Franklin made uh, was that 
He joined the Young Republican Club at Harvard as a freshman uh, in order to campaign uh, for uh, Cousin Ted, then Cousin Ted. Uh, he stayed with the Young Republicans just long enough for Theodore Roosevelt to be elected. Uh, he was reasonably close to Theodore. Uh, in fact, when uh, he was about to be married, when Roosevelt was about to be married to his uh, fifth cousin once removed, Eleanor, he was actually closer related to Theodore than to Eleanor uh, by a very little bit. Uh, Theodore offered to have them married in the White House. Uh, they rejected that idea, and they were not married in the White House, but Roosevelt admired Theodore Roosevelt very much. Uh, he was a domestic reformer, uh, an energetic, uh, active uh, uh, man who was interested in all kinds of things, and Roosevelt was especially interested in his having been Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Uh, that was the first big event uh, in Roosevelt's young life that he really remembered. Roosevelt had no idea that he'd become Assistant Secretary of the Navy himself. Uh, he was bored by law uh, practice. He had graduated from Harvard. Uh, he had gone into a, a law practice in New York City. It was boring. It was pushing paper. In fact, the first year he got no pay at all. It was like being an apprentice. Uh, then he got a small salary. Uh, but it was of no, no interest at all to him. He wanted to do something else. And fortuitously, along came an opportunity in politics. He hadn't sought it. Uh, even though he admired his Uncle Ted and what his Uncle Ted had done, uh, I don't think he thought of a political career for himself. But the Democratic Party uh, in this part of New York State needed a candidate for state senate. They had none. And it didn't look like the candidate could possibly win anyway. Uh, but if it were a Roosevelt, he could finance his own campaign. So they asked young Roosevelt if he would be a candidate. Roosevelt agreed. Uh, he did finance his own campaign. It cost them a little more than $2,000. Uh, he uh, hired a chauffeur and a car uh, and got an assistant, Lewis McHenry Howe, who was a sort of down and out uh, journalist. Uh, to help him campaign. And strangely enough, he won. He didn't expect to win. He ran for re-election, having liked the idea of being in the state Senate. Uh, he won again by an even bigger majority. At that point, in 1912, the big election was not New York State, but in the country. Uh, because Woodrow Wilson was running on the Democratic ticket, the governor of New Jersey and the former president of Princeton, the Republicans were split. Uncle Ted had been out of office. Uncle Ted, because he was the uncle of Eleanor. Uh, uncle Ted was out of office for four years. Uh, he had uh, pushed into office uh, one of his cronies, William Howard Taft. And Taft proved to be a disappointment to him. He was no reformer. He was more interested in the business community. Uh, and Theodore decided he wanted to run again. Well, the party didn't want him to run again. It was against tradition, in any case, to run for a third term. Uh, but Roosevelt broke from the party, formed his progressive party. Uh, he was asked about his health and his condition to run again. Uh, and he said, I'm as strong as a bull moose. And that became the uh, sobriquet of the party, uh, the bull moose party. The bull moose party and the Republican party split the Republican vote. Wilson only won with 41% of the vote in the country in 1912, but he won. Uh, and then he had to find a cabinet. He did what most presidents do. You look for your political cronies, and you uh, reward them. You give them positions in the cabinet if you have one to give. Uh, his publicist, major publicist then, uh, was Josephus Daniels. Uh, who was a newspaper publisher from Raleigh, North Carolina. He wanted to be Postmaster General because Postmaster General required very little work and it also gave you the opportunity to appoint postmasters all around the country. And that would give you a lot of political clout. That's what Daniels really wanted. I'm sorry, said Wilson. Uh, there's another